the command show DHCP lease allows us to see the DHCP lease information. We can see the IP address that was allocated to the router. So the temporary IP address is this on fast ethernet 00. The server that allocated the IP address is 192.168.1203. The lease is valid for 86,400 seconds. That if you don't know already, divided by 60, divided by 60 is one day. In other words, 24 hours. So by default, the DHCP server is allocating a address to this router for one day. That is the default gateway on the router. This is the client identifier of the local router. Its host name is R1. Show DHCP server. You can see that the router sent a broadcast to find a DHCP server. It was offered one IP address, which it then requested and got an acknowledgement for. The DNS servers that it was told to use is the DHCP server's IP address as well as Google. The subnet for the IP address is this, and the domain is home.com. So once again, it got allocated this IP address in this subnet by this DHCP server, and it was told to use this DNS server as the primary DNS, and this is the secondary DNS server. Now I could configure the IP address on the router statically, so I'll configure an IP address of 192.168.1.52, for example. Now, one of the problems with doing this manually is that I should ensure that I don't have a conflict of IP address on the network. The nice thing about DHCP is that you don't have to do that. The DHCP server will only allocate IP addresses that haven't been allocated if you've configured it properly. So show DHCP lease. We're still seeing our lease information. Let's have a look on the interface. So what I'll do is shut it down and then I'll no shut it to make sure that we don't use DHCP. Show DHCP lease. So there's no lease information at the moment. Show DHCP server still shows us information that we saw previously, but there's no DHCP lease at the moment. No IP address is being used. That was allocated via DHCP. Notice the difference, no gateway of last resort is set. So at the moment, if I try and ping google.com, it's not gonna work because we don't have a default gateway configured. Notice it's sending a broadcast out looking for a DNS server. So with static configuration, we would need to configure a default route pointing to the default gateway on the local subnet. And we'd also have to specify a DNS server. That kind of information was automatically allocated through DHCP previously. So notice now I can ping cisco.com, I can ping google.com, but I had to configure an IP address on the interface. I had to configure the DNS server information and I had to configure a default gateway. So show IP route now shows me that the gateway of last resort is this because I statically configured a default route. Now, in a lot of cases on routers and switches, you'll configure the IP addresses statically. But on a Cisco router facing the internet, you may be allocated an IP address through DHCP from your internet service provider or ISP. So there are cases when you wanna do it statically and there are cases when you wanna do it dynamically using DHCP. But for host devices, especially where you've got hundreds or thousands of host devices, you typically wanna configure the clients or the PCs with DHCP IP addresses. So phones, iPads, PCs, or laptops would be configured with DHCP, but servers would be configured with static IP addresses because you don't want those IP addresses to change. 
so it's important for you to know how to configure IP addresses both statically and dynamically.